guys, Steve Good here with the Scroll Saw Workshop. Out in the shop again tonight with my x carve CNC machine and I uh, put together a little project tonight that I think some of you may be interested in and some of you have probably already done some of this. Um, if you've read the forums over at Inventables at all, you know some people are using an Xbox 360 controller to uh, control the movement of their X-Carve to uh, get it set up for the initial cut. And I want to show you my take on that, what I've done, and maybe a couple little extra features that I've added. So with that, I'm going to zoom in and uh, give you a little closer look here. Here's my Xbox 360 controller. It's a wired controller plugged into the USB port of my computer. And I have used a program called XPatter uh, to map out the keys on the Xbox controller to the keyboard. And I know this has been done a few times, but I want to show you again something a little different. Um, as most of you have seen before, now when I use the D-pad, I can move the carriage in the Y position, Y axis, the X axis, and if I hold down the trigger button back here, then I can move it into the Z axis up and down. What I've added that's a little different, and I'm using another program called Auto Hotkeys, is I have the ability to set the depth of movement, uh, and I can also start up the control panel on the software with the, these buttons over here, and I'll show you the computer screen here in a minute. But right now, if I click this uh, A button, the bottom button, now what's happened is I'm moving it in .01 inches per click. If I hit the Y button, then I'm back to moving it at 0.1 inches per click. And when you're trying to get to your home position and you move it over in the Y direction or the X direction and then into the uh, uh, Y direction and then of course you're going to move it down. Initially you want it to be moving in these long steps but when you get down here close, if you hit the A button then I can use the precision to move it in exactly where I want it to be. Uh, and again, when I get ready to bring the bit back up if I need to move it I just hit the Y button and then I can bring it back up in the larger steps. And with that I want to scoot over to the computer screen and show you how I've done that. Okay, you're looking at my computer screen that I have attached to my X-Card now and I want to show you the two different programs that I use to make this uh, pendant for my X-Card. The first one and a piece of software that you've probably seen on the Inventables forums is called X-Padder, X-P-A-D-D-E-R. And what it does is it allows you to map the buttons and the joysticks on the uh, uh, 360 controller to the keyboard on your computer. And it's not too difficult to set up and there's a great tutorial on YouTube that I'll leave a link to down in the description uh, to show you how to set this program up. What I've added that's a little bit different to the program is I've added another program to this situation uh, called Auto Hotkeys. And because when you open up Easel, there's no hotkey, or at least not that I've found so far, and you can correct me if there is, but before you can use the uh, step control on the, on the keyboard or on the Xbox 360 controller, you have to come up here and hit carve to open the machine controls up. You also have your step interval which is 0.1 or 0.01 or whatever you set it up as and it would be really handy to be able to do that on the Xbox or on the Xbox controller also so you don't have to reach over to the keyboard and I find that very convenient so what I've done is I have mapped the X button on this 360 controller to go over and click on that to open up the machine controls then I've mapped and if you look at your step interval box, you can see that if I click on the A button, it puts the cursor in there, backspaces out, and puts in 0 .01. If I hit the Y button, it does the same thing, only puts in 0 .1. So then you have the two different step intervals to zero in on your home position. Uh, so that's what I've done. And the way I've done that, aside from using X pattern to map the keys, I've downloaded a free utility called Auto Hotkeys. And now I'm using the older version of Auto Hotkeys because it came with this macro controller. And basically what it allows you to do is you can start the recording on this. And I'll just do a quick one here to show you. Let me bring this back up. And let's say we wanted to create a recording to click on the show toolpath 
which I may add to the Xbox. I don't have that one yet. But you hit the record button. You just drag your mouse over to show tool path. Click on the button. Now, of course, we don't have a... Let me put a uh, design on the screen so we can see. I'm going to stop this recording and we'll actually do it again here. So we're going to hit the record button. It's going to put it up in the upper left hand corner. I'm going to take the mouse over, click on show tool path. It'll draw the show tool path. So we've completed that macro that we need. All we have to do is come over here and click stop. And this macro is written that we can set up a keystroke that anytime we hit that keystroke, it'll run this macro, which will take the pointer over to the show tool uh, pass. Now, one thing about auto hotkeys is it, it expects everything to be in the same location every time. So I always open easel in full screen, so it's not been a problem for me. Uh, but if you were to do this and minimize the screen, then when the mouse went over, it would miss this button. So when you're using this utility, you have to keep everything in the same place all the time. So, and you have to learn a little bit of programming to do this, but it's very basic script writing. If I wanted to save this script that we just wrote to, for the tool pass, I have to give it a key combination assigned on the keyboard. So I'm going to use the uh, exclamation mark, which is the, the symbol in this programming language for the alt key. I'm going to use the number 4, so it'll be Alt 4, will show us the tool path. Then just the syntax of this is two uh, colons after that. And then at the end of the script, we have to type return. Now we can save that, and we'll save it on our desktop as tool pass. Hit save, and we can exit out of the recorder. Now if we go find that one called show tool pass, if we run it, it'll put it down here in our system tray. And the next time we have uh, the software up, if we hit Alt 4, it'll go over, click on the show tool pass and make the tool path. So now let's say we want to use that on our Xbox controller. We have to go back to the XPatter software and we have to map one of these keys for show tool path. And in this case, since I haven't used it yet, I'm going to use the B key, and if I click on that on the on-screen representation, all I have to do is hit for the B key Alt 4, and now Alt 4 will, uh, this button will now bring up the show tool pass. So if we go back to our easel software, let's see if we can erase the tool pass, and we hit the B key button now, if we did everything right, we should show the tool pass, and you can see that we have. So you can map your entire Xbox 360 controller to do the different features you wanted. If you wanted to hide the material, you could write another script to hide the material, turn it back on. It's just a matter of do you have enough buttons to get done what you want to get done. So I hope that's helpful. Again, it's XPatter software, which is $9.95. It's auto hotkeys, which is free, but you do want the older version. And this 360 controller I got off Amazon for I think $12. So for a very small fee, you have a very nice controller for your X-Card. I'm Steve Good. Hope you liked this video. Catch you next time.